Hey guys, welcome to the podcast. This morning we're going to talk about the fight last night between Artur Bedabiv and Caleb Smith. And as expected, Bedabiv was a dominant. He put on a performance that is indicative of someone who is on his way to fight for the Undisputed Championship. Uh, he will unify with Dimitri Bivol. Uh, evidently, it's going to be in Saudi Arabia. And quickly, I'll go through the fight. Um, going into the fight, I I did have a bias towards Cal Smith because I just think he's a good fighter, but I know people that are around him. Uh, I know his trainer, Buddy McGirt. I know Rachel Charles, who's friends with Buddy McGirt also. So I was kind of hoping that this would be a fight with my heart that he would be able to pull off. But with my head, I knew this was a tough task. Uh, I've said it would probably go about six to six to eight. It was right there at seven. Um, here's what I here's what, what I took out of it. Um, I think number one, the inactivity for both fighters. They both started a little bit slow. I didn't like Callum Smith kept backing off to the ropes, which is something Buddy McGirt told him you got to get off the ropes at some point. I uh, did he when and when he did when he did get off the ropes and use his jab. He did. He did well. He, you know, not not that he was going to outpower Bedabeev. I think he just was a more powerful guy than Smith. So I thought he did okay there. But there were those were few and far between. Even the punches that were in, I believe, round four, where it doesn't look like it doesn't look like they're hurting punches. They don't. They're just kind of punches from Bedabeev that are just consistent. They're like sledgehammers. You can tell. And I, I could see actually in the first round when Better Beef hit Smith to the body, I could see a different change in him where he kind of noticed that this guy's got legit power. And that was something that he knew, but I don't know if he knew it was that, that big of power. As the fight progressed, it got worse and worse for Smith because he was getting beat up. Um, when I saw him right around, right after round four, when, when, when he was taking a multitude of punches. I thought that he just didn't have enough or he or he kind of was resigned to the fact that this is going to be a long night. Now, I give him credit. He threw back. When he was getting hurt, he threw back. He had some great punches, some good combinations. Uh, left hook to the body, left hook to the head. The catch hook, they know that. They know that's coming. And they, and he, he really didn't hit him much with it. Uh, I think one time in about round two, he got, he got caught with it. But that's it. And really, he he used he used uh, Smith used his jab as best as he could. He just couldn't keep Better Beef off of him. Then round seven came, and I think Buddy had seen enough, and he stopped the fight, which was a a great stoppage for Buddy McGirt. He's one of the few trainers and cornermen that I've seen that would that will protect the fighters more. It, it doesn't matter to Buddy, you know what? Why why go out there on your shield when um, the fight? You know he w didn't win a round. You know he wasn't winning a round at all. And so why why put him in that position again? He's he's fought on some high levels here, so he's made some money. Um, good looking guy, his family he comes from a good family, so I think that's something he might consider. I will say this though, at thirty eight, Better Beef is getting better, which normally under normal circumstances does not happen. Usually there's a decline. So that begs the question. Is there an issue there? There was an atypical test. It does put a little asterisk by this whole thing. By his whole, there, there's cloud. What I don't understand is there, there really isn't much talk about it. Just kind of like, oh, it's, it's what happened. Uh, it, it's fine. I don't know. And I, and I know the reason I say that is because if you're a clean fighter, you're a clean fighter. You cannot, at 38 years old, I don't think your HGH goes up and your testosterone levels go up naturally. I, I just don't buy it. I do not buy it. It's, it's the excuse you hear all the time. But then again, I will say, like I've said before, I think on this level of boxing, I think most people are doing it. Most people are, are, are gaming the system. It's just how it is. And, and it's, it's when you're questioning that, it, it gets into, you're going on a slippery slope. But needless to say, he'd look good. I'm going to go back, but I'll say he better be able to look good. 19 fights as a pro, that's not a lot. So he hasn't taken a lot of punishment. Uh, which is why at 30, and I think you could it could be okay, but at 38, I don't think your levels of testosterone are going to be higher. It, and then all of a sudden they go back down. That he's never tested atypical before until now. 
and on a big fight, mm, that, that there there's a lot of question marks there. A lot of question marks there. Definitely something. De definitely something to look at. Was the testing that that he took? Was it a uh, for the for the other fights? Were they? Uh, did anything ever come out from them? No. Again, there's so many questions to ask yourself. So, do you feel that Better Beef is the best in 175 division? Absolutely. I think he beats Baval. I think he's just one of these guys that comes out and he's a train, he's a uh, freight train, runs you over. I don't know if uh, Baval could keep him off of him. Better Beef's game is is he's coming at you throwing punches, and he looked great as far as boxing skills. You know, I think his jab is like a jackhammer. It hits you, you do, it, and once it hits you, that, that, there's only so much you can take. Because that's that's the reason why I said seven round six through eight, because he might uh, um, Smith might have been okay for the first few rounds, but eventually that will get to you. Eventually that'll get to you. Um, I think he did as best he could. He showed a champion's heart. I think Better Beef is the one hundred seventy five pound division king right now. I think he will walk through Baval. I know I've said that it would be a good fight, but I think he beats Baval pretty easily. Um, I don't think Baval has the punch. To, to stop Better Beef, but I think Better Beef has the punch to stop Baval. I'm going to say that when this fight is signed, and evidently it is for Saudi Arabia, I think Better Beef knocks out Baval and makes the, makes himself the undisputed 175 pound champion. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching the Sapata Brand Podcast. Please subscribe to the podcast and listen where all podcasts are available.